Um, so I guess we're talking about sea level rise. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very cool. Awesome. There was um, so much information on the internet about this. I couldn't even pick just one, you know, <laughs> reliable source. There were so many. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, you know, you have like a lot of like what's contributing to sea level rise, but then, you know, you see a lot of stuff around like how it's impacting um, insurance markets and like real estate, um, which I think is pretty interesting, like how it's affecting a lot of people um, and like their insurance rates. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, also uh, the, the sea level rise, I didn't realize that it was both um, because of the heating of the ocean uh, and because of the glaciers melting. I'm sorry, I just got out of another class and my head is all over the place. Um, fine. Well, yeah, I didn't realize it was because of both of it and because of the heating of the water, you know, it causes more sur storm surges yeah. and uh, everything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess because of the damage, I can also see how that would impact insurance rates and everything like that. <laughs> When I was doing my research, I didn't find a solution, though. I found that everyone, you know, was just explaining what the problem was and things like the conveyor belt thing situation going on. It's very scary, but there was no solution. So I'm like, are we just all going to sink? What's going on? What are we going to do? Yes. Yeah. Should we invest in boats? <laughs> Can, you Can you explain what the conveyor belt uh, situation is? I haven't heard that term. Okay. Yeah. So apparently, um, ice is melting up north, like around Greenland or so, and it's messing up the the system of like it's a, it's a conveyor system in the Atlantic, right? So going so coming from the eastern coast of America, going towards Africa and stuff like that. So with the glaciers melting up north, um, I believe it's the water is getting denser, and then it's it's disabling the conveyor belt. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Move around, pretty much. Okay. I hope that was clear. <laughs> right. It, it right. was a little confusing, but I think yeah. about it. Yeah, that's something that I, I'd always thought, you know, it was just the glaciers melting, but, you know, like Emily said, I'd, I'd, I'd never realized it was like water actually expanding too with the temperature increase. Um, mm -hmm. and it is interesting, like a lot of the, there's not a lot of like really concrete solutions, you know, you've got people that, um, you know, retreat and like climate refugees that just have to move to a whole different place entirely, which has got to be as scary as anything. Like your home just like being unlivable. Uh, well, it's, yet, it's like, kind of, things. it's funny that uh, we're talking about this because we in here in Houston went through Hurricane Harvey last year. Oh, wow. And it was, it, I've, I've lived here about 40 years and there were places that flooded during this storm that have never flooded before. And you know, a lot of people still haven't moved back into their homes. So it's, it really put a human uh, face on the whole issue of storm surge. And, and uh, it, it does make you wonder in a city this size, there's like, we're at sea level, there's about 5 million people in the city, you know, what it, if the sea levels really rise, it's going to affect a lot of people, even if it's just a few, a few inches, right? So. And I didn't realize when I was doing the research that there was a uh, more localized uh, sea level rise, depending on the uh, the terrain and that kind of thing. I, I just never thought of it before as far as the, the overall level and then that it could be different in certain areas. Yeah, I'm actually, I just pulled up the article uh, that was talking about global and local sea level and how they're two different things, but I mean, they're both absolutely terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's 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 wild when you see it on like a local level too, and like people that you know, because I think that really hits home for a lot more people. And I think that's how I think a lot of this communication needs to be um, spread to people to make them care. Is like showing you know people just like them. You know, it's affecting their lives and really putting a strain on uh, their life in general. Right. I think Hurricane Harvey was a huge wake up call for a lot of people here. So. Yeah. I can imagine. I was in New Jersey when Sandy came by. So mm -hmm. that was, yeah, that was pretty scary too. I yeah. live in Pennsylvania. So like right on the border of like uh, New Jersey, like Flemington area um, and 
Easton, Pennsylvania. So, I mean, we got a lot of damage too, but you know, it's nothing compared to actual coastal cities and the damage that they got. We just lost power for like two weeks, but mm -hmm. even still, it definitely. <laughs> yeah, that was scary. Take that for granted. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, especially cities like Miami too. I mean, it's it's almost as bad as as New well, it's worse than New York, but I I'm really afraid of what's going to happen. Like, you know, what policies are government officials taking to disable that, like just to stop the or to even find a solution, do something about it because how are they like you're talking about um these refugees, where are these people going to move to? Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, not, not, yeah, not only like where they're going to move, but it, it affects a ton of stuff like related to cultivation of food crops because a lot of them aren't resistant to like um, increasing salt levels that you're going to get with a lot of that seawater moving inland. Um, and it's just it's it's amazing the amount of problems that something like this can cause, even with like such a little rise, you know, perceptively, yeah. but it's still making a huge impact. Where, I never even thought about the food issue because they're. In uh, coastal Houston, there's a lot of uh, rice that's grown and things like that. So I never even thought about that. So that's a good point. Just what the regular crackers, by the way. I always have a hard time finding rice in Houston. don't know why. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I never knew that. Yeah, you were saying that there was no, you know, real solutions. I think at this point, it's just adapting and you know trying to figure out how we can live like this it's only going to get worse <laughs> unfortunately um yeah and also erosion i mean yeah right I, I wish i wish uh different cities and different people i'm saying could get together to find a solution to this because um, I was watching a couple of videos actually on YouTube and once I typed in sea level rise, all I saw was Miami and New York. You know, it seems as if they're just gonna melt away or just float away. It's it's a scary reality. Um, I hope hopefully something is done for this. I'm not too sure. I'm not really familiar with the sea sea rise um situ problem. So this is a good lesson for me. <laughs> something to watch out for. I think Samuel mentioned insurance earlier. I think that's yeah. kind of a, a a big piece of it, right? If um... yeah, yeah. So in 2016, I think like Freddie Mac, which is the one of the federally backed companies, they were warning that um, you know sea level rise could destroy billions of pro dollars of property. Um, and it's a interesting balance when a lot of the people making our policies in these areas that are going to be most affected won't even acknowledge climate change. So it's like, it's tough to address it with a lot of these people in the places of power that they are. That's true. Right. That's true. I mean, if they don't believe in it, how are they going to fight it? Yeah. So it's just like a constant like cycle of like trying to convince people. We just need, you know, I, mean, I guess more scientists in politics, which is a tough sell sometimes. <laughs> That's interesting. I think also if if they make it financially difficult for people to rebuild, then um, that I think that's part of the solution. Um, I mean, in in a lot of the areas here in Houston, there people have no business rebuilding because certain areas have flooded repeatedly, and people still rebuild their homes. And um, I think people just need to come to that realization that it's uh, it's it's not going to change and um, you know, people need to make dis hard decisions, but they don't. And um, people, the the they're developing areas that shouldn't be developed. So even though they know that this is a problem, they're still building new neighborhoods in places that are uh, uh, not very elevated. So it's uh, it's it's kind of a there's certain things that they could do not to solve the problem, but to mitigate, I guess, the human cost of the the problem. Yeah, and if you're not educated about a lot of those areas, you know, you could get tricked into buying real estate. Exactly. Many years, you're just you're just stuck with it and all the right. effects of the sea level rise. Yep. I really feel like the real estate should not be available to purchase, you know, to begin with. Yes. 
so okay let's say somebody else like gets damaged or something right i understand it's on a personal level but that's also a problem the state will have to deal with because now where are you going to put this family how are you going to feed them how are you going to take care of them so that's a whole problem for a society that's interesting though i didn't know that you know there was still like sell properties that were in areas like these yeah there's people that are flipping homes that have been flooded that uh, wow. literally were flooded to their roof line and uh, you know it's it's not healthy to live in these places but people will fix it up and te technically i think the county sh or the state should buy out the property and just uh, raise the house and don't ever rebuild on that that spot but exactly. it doesn't happen like that and and i think there's a lot of uh greed and developers will go into areas and develop whole subdivisions or neighborhoods in places that they just shouldn't be constructed i was reading a lot about uh like architectural uh you know developments uh to try and combat flooding and you know they're doing they're doing things but they're really expensive and yeah. you know once again just like everything it, i think it just comes down to money so you can build a house up on stilts, but I have no idea how much something like that would cost. Yeah, I will. I, the article I was reading, uh, they were talking about, you know, like barriers and drainage ditches and, you know, building seawalls around cities and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm no architect, but right. it definitely seems like they would do something and help like, even a little bit. Yeah. Where was that in? Was it in Miami or somewhere? Me? I'm yeah, sorry. Where? I was at Rotterdam. Um, some oh. some city in Europe. Okay. Okay. <laughs> of course, Europe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's interesting too, like who, who gets the bill for a lot of those, um, you know, constructions of like dams and things, because it's, uh, I assume it benefit like a certain portion of homeowners, but is that something that the county or local government would do or developers it's like a whole new market that people need to start figuring out and it's it's tough with all these different like zoning and building codes because a lot of that varies county to county so it's almost like you need some kind of overarching policy that kind of sets the standard for everybody because it's just too segmented right now well and unfortunately it gets to be very political at the local level because, for instance, in Houston, we have our Corps of Engineers, and um, the they're being sued by a lot of homeowners who lost their homes when they released the dams during Harvey. Um, they opened the dams, and um, I think they're afraid to make a decision now because it's it is so political, and they they know the right thing to do, but they're just not willing to do it. So. <laughs> yeah they had some really good flood maps here that showed the extent of the flooding and uh, they were really cool like animated interactive maps and they got taken offline because i think people were using those maps in their lawsuits against the core so um it's it, it is super political so oh huh. i didn't have public information though um, I can't find it. It should be, but I've searched just, you know, for my own, out of my own curiosity. And um, I think unless you know the elevation of your home and you kind of know the area, it's, it's really hard to have a, it's probably out there somewhere, but they've wow. just made it to where it's not as easy to find <laughs> as it should be. Yeah. So. In the chat, I just sent, um, I found this article about uh, building the seawalls, and this is uh, an example from Indonesia. <coughs> um, but I mean, it's just it's a cool read. You guys Excuse want to read it? I also this is my first time using this, and I just found out there was a chat option. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I see it. Yep, I see yeah. it down there. But yeah, that's crazy that it says it's like a forty billion dollar project. It's like infrastructure like this definitely is not like a very you know, a subtle commitment. You really have to go all in. Is that billion with a B? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a lot okay. of money. Oh gosh, it's huge. Yeah. I know, right? What did they? Something about it being like a Titanic or Jesus? Yeah. Uh, cool. 
Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure with like all the potential areas that are affected, you know, it's not it's probably not reasonable to try to do that for some of the, like the lower populated areas, and it's tough yeah. to justify those costs even for the higher populated areas. Yeah. For wow. this project specifically, I know that they're talking to developers about you know uh, like vacation, luxury vacation spots and everything, and I think that's how they're getting some of the funding for this. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean. Gotta play the game. <laughs> I think it goes to show too how investments in lowering carbon emissions and trying to draw down a lot of that to begin with is going to end up saving people a lot of money in the long run. I think nobody wants to step up step up to the plate and like put that on their bill and be proactive about it, which is where policy really needs to change. And you know they're going to have these governments are going to have to pay more later on for for damages. I mean. Might as well be proactive now. But, yeah. yeah, but political, <laughs> political stuff. Um, I think everything gets passed on to the next, the next group or the next generation. Yeah, actually, it's kind of off topic, but I live in State College now, and they have just redone the entire uh, main road, Atherton Street. And at first, they were just redoing the water pipes. And then they realized that they were in two years going to have to redo the electrical wiring and all the telephone lines and electricity and everything. So instead of, you know, waiting to do that, they decided to just knock it out at one go. So I think that's like the first example of any <laughs> proactive right. government work that I've seen in a while. Yeah, I live in State College too, and that construction has been awful driving up North Atherton. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm glad they're doing it, but I wish I wish it'd be a little easier to drive through. <laughs> exactly, but you know, at least they'll knock it out all now, and so we don't have to worry yeah. about it for a couple more years. But still, still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think we've touched on like I don't know what else there is for sea level rise, but um, yeah, the minimum amount of time we have to do for this recording and I see. Okay, we've definitely hit that. What time did we start? I think it was eight fifteen. Yeah. Maybe. About that time. Yeah, so I think we should be good. <laughs> awesome. Well, it was really good meeting all of you, and uh, hopefully everybody does really well in the rest of their classes. It's been it's always an interesting semester in the spring. It always seems like it's a little harder in the fall. <laughs> Agreed, definitely. It was nice meeting you guys. You too. Yeah. Thank it's you. Definitely interesting putting a face to people instead of.